Saving Edward. It was summertime on the island of Sodor. All the engines were working hard carrying goods and passengers. They cheerfully chuffed up and down the lines. All except Edward. Edward was worried. He wheezed as he puffed and steam hissed out of his cylinders. One morning, Sir Topham Hatt came to the sheds. He had an important job for Edward. A special delivery of fruit and vegetables is coming to the docks today, he told him. I want you to take it to Knapford. Yes, sir, said Edward. But he was worried about his wheeze. It felt worse today. Thomas, you ought to go to the docks and shunt Edward's freight cars. After that, you can carry on with your usual jobs. Yes, sir, said Thomas eagerly. Thomas and Edward puffed to the water tower. Edward tried to stop wheezing, but he couldn't. What's the matter? asked Thomas. You don't sound well. I can't seem to get up steam properly, said Edward. But I'll manage. Don't tell anyone, Thomas. Thomas wasn't sure about this. I don't want Sir Topham Hat to know, hissed Edward. Thomas could see Edward was worried, so he agreed. He hurried off to shunt Edward's freight cars. Edward followed slowly to the docks. Edward was very worried. What if he was too weak to pull his train? He would be of no use to the railway. He wouldn't be useful at all. Edward shuddered at the thought. Must keep going, must keep going, he wheezed fearfully. At the docks, Thomas had shunted Edward's freight cars into place for him. Soon, Edward was coupled up and ready to go. Go on, Edward, you can do it, called Thomas encouragingly. Edward puffed as hard as he could, but the train hardly moved at all. I'm sorry, Thomas, Edward wheezed miserably. I'm not a really useful engine anymore. So top of hat will have to send me for scrap. Thomas was very upset. He wanted to help Edward. I'll do my other jobs first, Thomas said. Then I'll pull the train for you. Edward watched Thomas puff away. He wasn't sure if it was right to let Thomas do his job. Edward felt very worried. Thomas needed to do all his jobs as quickly as possible so that he had time to pull Edward's train. Hurry up, hurry up, he told the troublesome trucks. What for, what for, they snapped. For Edward, puffed Thomas, and he biffed them crossly. Edward waited sadly by his train. He hoped Thomas would come back soon. When Thomas finished all his jobs, he puffed back to collect Edward's train. Edward was very pleased to see him. Don't worry, Edward, puffed Thomas. I'll have your job done in no time. You go back to Tidmouth and I'll meet you there later. Thank you, Thomas, wheezed Edward. And Thomas pulled away with a long line of freight cars. Thomas was tired. He had been working all day, and Edward's train was very heavy. But he was determined not to let Edward down. Sir Topham Hatt was talking to Gordon as Thomas puffed in. Thomas, this train is late, he said crossly. And why are you pulling it? Where is Edward? Thomas didn't want to get Edward into trouble. He had to think of an excuse. Uh, uh, well, Edward took on the wrong sort of coal, sir. 
The wrong sort of coal, Boomster Topham Hat. What nonsense, Thomas! I'll find out what Edward has to say about this later. Sir Topham Hat was very cross. He gave Thomas another job to do. Yes, sir, said Thomas. Gordon steamed through the countryside. And then he found Edward having a rest. What's all this about the wrong sort of coal? Huffed Gordon. Edward looked puzzled. The wrong sort of coal? Gordon told Edward all about Thomas and Sir Topham Hat. Edward felt very bad. He wanted to put things right. He decided he must go and see Sir Topham Hat straight away. Edward hissed and wheezed his way to the station. His fire felt feeble. His wheels felt weak, but he battled on. At last, Edward puffed into the station. He found Sir Topham Hat. It's all my fault, sir, he said sadly. I asked Thomas not to tell you I couldn't work. I was afraid of going for scrap. I'm very sorry. I should have talked to you this morning. You should always tell me if you have a problem, said Sir Topham Hat. You are a loyal, hard-working, and really useful engine. I will send you to the fitter's yard straight away. You'll soon be as good as new. Edward was very relieved. And Thomas was very tired from his extra work. But they both agreed, even when it's hard, it's always best to tell the truth. 